Welcome to Psalm 114. The Lord is a helper and defender. I'll read a little Greek, then we'll go into the psalm. Hallelujah. In Exodo Israel, Ex Egyptu, Iku Yaakov, Ek Leu Vorvaru, Eganithi Eudea, Agias Ma Av Tu, Israel Exusia Av Tu. And again, Alleluia. In the Exodus, we have Exodo, uh, it's the same word for the Exodus, the second book of the Bible. And when they exited, Egypt is what it's talking about. In the exodus of Israel from out of Egypt, of the house of Jacob from out of a barbaric people. Uh, now, of the how now Jacob is not the barbaric people, but uh, the Egyptians. Uh, Varvaru from the we have barbaric. When I was in Greece f- quite a few years ago, the Greeks uh, I found out call all their neighbors the uh, Varvaru, Varvaros, the barbarians. Of we come, we have a barbaric, but basically, um, it's some almost a um, word that people use uh, against somebody else. They call them a, they're barbaric, and uh, their actions and so forth. In Egypt, to the house of Jacob, uh, who was named Israel. Uh, were considered barbaric here in this psalm. And it says, Judea became his sanctuary, and Judea was the place in Canaan, uh, and Israel, his authority, exactly how is re- well, Judea became his sanctuary. That's where the temple ended up being in Judea. And Israel was more or less the whole country at that time, even though it split later. Uh, the sea beheld and fled. Now, it's going back to the Exodus. And here what it's talking about is what's uh, mentioned in Exodus fourteen sixteen, where it says, And the sons of Israel entered into the midst of the sea, and that would have been the Red Sea, down on the dry land. And its water was a wall at the right and a wall at the left. And then it says, The Jordan turned to the rear, and this is when the sons of Israel went into Canaan land across the Jordan from the east going westward into and ending up in Jericho. And it says in Joshua 3.13, And it will be as whenever the feet of the priests should rest the feet, that is of the ones lifting the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth, Whenever they should rest the feet in the water of the Jordan, the water of the Jordan shall fail, and the water going down shall stand from above as a heap. And they went across in dry ground in the Jordan. So God caused these two miracles to happen for the sons of Israel. And then in verse 4 it says, Of the mountains leaped as rams, and the hills as little lambs of sheep. Now, mountains, we know, don't leap. They're they're static. They're hills. And uh, the hills here and the mountains don't move unless it's an earthquake. Could I suppose be referring to that? Uh, An earthquake, uh, in the end, it talks about in the the book of Revelation. But the leaping, I thought was interesting. Uh, Leaping as rams and the hills. And Jesus says, in Luke six twenty three, rejoice in that day, and that's when men detest you, and leap. <laughs> For behold, your wage is great in the heaven. So you jump up, hey, hallelujah, you leap in happiness. And you can look up that word in the apostolic Bible app.com, and you can see other places where leaping occurred. Then in verse 5, what is it with you, O sea, that is the Red Sea, that you fled, it backed up, and you, O Jordan, that you turned 
to the rear where it was banked up. What is it with you? God is involved in the earth. He can do whatever he would like to do. Right now, they just sent, they as being the United States and maybe other countries did some of the money for this uh, web telescope, James Webb Telescope, which is going a mile away from, my, a million miles away from the earth, and it's going to unfold in like a giant uh, flower with all these petals, and it has infrared uh, abilities to pick up infrared lights, which apparently are uh, more accurate as far as seeing things further out, because the light of the nearer things sort of blinds the telescope from seeing things further out. So the um, infrared can pick up things further out, and they're hoping to be able to see the Big Bang. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> but that's what it said. And so God is doing things in the earth, doing things in the heavens, and it mentions it here, and it says, For the mountains leaped as rams, and, um, and the hills as little lambs of sheep. It's almost like a good song. From the presence of the Lord, the earth was shaken. And earlier we were talking about it, an earthquake. But it says, uh, then it says, from the presence of the God of Jacob. In Luke 21, 26, it said, um, men, Jesus says, men fainting from fear is what's going to happen. An expectation of the things coming to the inhabitable world. For the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Now, we don't see that here yet in 2022, but it will happen. And when it does, all these things start happening, men will be fainting from the fear how to get away from something that you can't get away from, but would be really horrible. And then in Hebrews 12, 26, it says, but now he has promised, God is, has promised, saying, still once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now, I don't know how the heaven can shake, unless it was the things within it, uh, because the heaven uh, is made up of all these uh, celestial objects. And so exactly what it's talking about, I guess, uh, I don't, hopefully I won't find out, but people will, maybe they're reading this. Verse 8, uh, they'll, be, they'll be shaken from the presence of the God of Jacob, of the one turning the rock into lakes of water. And that is mentioned in Exodus 17, 6, where it says, Behold, I stand there before your coming upon the rock in Horeb. This is the children of sons of Israel leaving Egypt, and they went into the wilderness area to the rock in Horeb, which was an area where Mount Sinai was located. And you shall strike the rock, and that would have been Moses, and shall come forth from out of it water, and the people shall drink. And it talks about lakes of water, so apparently this water coming out was a lot. And then uh, it says that, and the chiseled stone into springs of waters, I think it's talking about the same place because it says in Deuteronomy 8.15, he's the one leading to you a spring of water from out of a chiseled rocks rock. And uh, it's a possibility when, uh, when he says strike the rock, uh, well, you think just hitting it like that, but maybe they actually started cutting into it, chiseled rock. No, no, it wasn't there, but... It's interesting that it talks about chiseled stone or rock. It could be rock here, too. Psalm 115, our next video, is about the idols. What are idols and idols in that day and the idols uh, today are quite different, but we'll find out where they are this similar. And hope you'll join us in Psalm 115, and then till then... God bless.